Hey everybody, my name is Gary Sims, Randall Authority. We got some really good feedback when we did the review of the MIPS CI20 Creator, that single board computer that rivals the Raspberry Pi, but uses a MIPS based processor rather than an ARM based one. Today we're going to be looking at another single board computer, this time with an ARM based processor. It comes from Solid Run and it's called a Hummingboard. Okay, let's just quickly take a look at the board itself. As you can see, it's a very small form factor. Here is a heat sink above the dual core processor, which is uh, buried beneath it. Here we have the set of uh, GPIO pins. Here we have the audio out. We have an infrared detector, two USB ports, the ethernet connector, the HDMI port, and then the power port here, which is a micro USB port. There's also lots of several advanced different ports for things like LVDS uh, displays and so on that you can find more about on Hummingboard's website. One interesting thing about the Hummingboard is that it has the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi. Here at the back I have a Raspberry Pi Model B, that's the Raspberry Pi 1 because of course the Raspberry Pi 2 has now also been announced. And here is the Hummingboard from Solid Run. I've got a box over here and I'm now going to try and put this uh, Hummingboard into my Raspberry Pi box and see whether it fits. And there you have it, the Hummingboard inside the case that used to house my Raspberry Pi. That's a pretty good deal that you can be able to find some accessories like for the Raspberry Pi that will work just as well on the Hummingboard. Okay, connecting up the Hummingboard is quite simple. First of all, we're going to need the HDMI cable from the television, which we plug just here in the HDMI port. Then we're going to, I've already included the SD card that I put in earlier on. I'll, I'll talk about later how you can put different operating systems onto the SD card, including Linux, as well as Android. We're going to need a ethernet cable, which I've got over here, just to plug that in there. So there's the ethernet cable. This particular model doesn't have Wi-Fi by default, though of course it is an option. I'm also gonna plug in a wireless mouse, because if I'm using Android, I want to be able to navigate around the screen. So there's my wireless mouse. And finally, it's powered by micro USB. So all we do, just connect in the micro USB in here. And that's it, it's powered up. We have the lock screen here, so it's use the mouse to drag that across to unlock. And there we have a fairly standard desktop um, home screen. We have the Play Store, we have a whole bunch of Google apps, including Gmail and G Plus and Maps and so on. Some of these, of course, won't make much sense on a development board like this. The Maps, for example, really won't be of much use, but YouTube and uh, Google Plus and so on, really quite useful. And as we can see, there are many, uh, there are multiple screens of the desktop. Here I've already installed a few applications, which we're going to be looking at in a few minutes. And here we have the app drawer. This is using Google Now Launcher, so we can see the kind of Android L type arrangement here. And here is an interesting application, the Ethernet app that comes in, bundled by default. It allows me to configure the Ethernet. And if I, this first window here, this first icon, lets me see that the Ethernet has in fact got an address from my router. And then I can also do things like configure a static IP or stay on DHCP and so on. So that means now the Ethernet is running on here, which means I could probably go to something like Google Play and it should all come up and work without any problem. There we have it, Google Play coming up. So there it is. That's the initial things on what you get when you boot up the humming board into Android. In terms of performance, you aren't gonna get any earth shattering records out of this little device. Remember, it's only a dual core Cortex A9 based device and it has a Vivanti GC2000 GPU. As you can see here on the screen, the results from Epic Citadel show just 24.4 frames per second in 720p HD at the highest performance level. So this is gonna be good enough for home media, it's gonna be good enough as a desktop, it's even gonna be good enough for a lot of 2D games, but don't expect anything really serious in terms of 3D gaming. The Epic Citadel results are also reflected in the Antutu score. This particular device scores just 12,198. As a far cry from the quad-core and octa-core devices that we're seeing in smartphones and tablets a day. However, again, I'd just like to underline that for media consumption as a smart TV, as a 
simple desktop for 2D games that is more than sufficient. However, it isn't a powerhouse. Although the humming board doesn't do too well in 3D graphics and can't be compared with today's high-end smartphones and tablets, when it comes to multimedia, the board behaves excellently well. There are two types of media I suppose we need to consider. One is streaming media like YouTube and Netflix, and the other is media that is stored locally. As you can see, the YouTube streaming works absolutely fine. Now let's have a look at how it handles Netflix. So the Netflix app installs and runs without any problem. And as you can see, I've been able to get into the uh, Netflix and to watch a bit of Doctor Who without any problem whatsoever. It's also worth noticing that the uh, sound comes through the HDMI cable and works on the television without any problem whatsoever. I just want to quickly mention that you can run more than just Android on the humming board. I'm going to cover this more when I come to review the QBox. But basically, you can run things like Arch Linux, Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, and several other media oriented distributions like OpenELEC and Geekbox. The way you put new software onto the humming board is you download Solid Run's uh, special firmware called Ignition. You can download that from their website. And then you copy it onto an SD card using the Win32 Disk Imager program. The full instructions are again on Solid Run's website. Once you've copied it onto the flash drive, you boot your humming board from the special firmware and you'll then get a menu that tells you all the different distributions that are available to be downloaded. You need to have the Ethernet working, you need to have the cable plugged in, and then it will download and overwrite the Ignition firmware with the Linux distribution that you want. Once the write is complete, reboot the board and everything should come up as expected. The humming board comes in three versions. There's the humming board i1, which is the entry level board, which has just 512 megabytes of memory and a single core Cortex A9 CPU. It supports Linux, but unfortunately doesn't support Android. However, you do get Android on the humming board i2 and the i2 EX. Both of these have dual core Cortex A9 processors. The i2 has a GC8800 GPU, while the A2 EX has the GC2000 GPU. Both have one gigabyte of RAM, and the EX version has a whole more load of extra ports for connecting different things like displays and so on to the board, which aren't in the cheaper i2. The i1 costs just $70, the i2 $80, and the i2 EX $110. And so there it is, the humming board. The same size as a Raspberry Pi, but a lot more powerful and with a lot more options. My name is Gary Sims, Randall Authority. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow me on Google+. You should also subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel, where you'll find loads of videos by all my brothers over at Android Authority, including Jace Joe, Josh Lan, Kevin the Tech Ninja, Ash, and now Taylor Martin. And as for me, I'll see you in my next video.